Hello guys, recently I was doing a lot of ISP.NET MVC stuff with C Sharp, so I want to record some of my knowledge. I'm gonna start with the mind map. This is the ground I, uh, I want to cover. Of course, I'm not sure I'm gonna cover this in one video, so whatever it takes, I will uh, cover most of it. We'll go and see where we'll get. Okay, so first, maybe you're wondering why I'm still using Windows 7 on this computer. The reason is uh, very simple. Actually, this is note for myself. I have um, HydroVision ATI driver for my uh, computer, which I like very much. HydroVision, I have also HydroGrid, as you can see here. I have virtual desktops, which are nine virtual desktops, and I can use them um, in a way which I find very neat, very nice. For example, I can run many applications on this desktop and create my uh, environment for C Sharp development, for example, and I can save this desktop. Once I save it, the next time I restart my computer, I can bring it back, restore desktop, and all the applications which were running on this desktop will be will be again available, will run automatically. With uh, with Hydra, with HydroGrid, I also can organize my desktop very nice, as you can see. So that's why I like these uh, drivers. And I'm afraid that if I switch to Windows 10, I will lose these drivers. Also, I have a lot of problems. I had a lot of problems with this computer, which is with motherboard Asus A4 M88, whatever, if I'm not mistaken. And I have a tool set from AMD Overdrive, AMD Overdrive. Also, from Asus, I have. AI Suite, Asus Update, EPU, PC Probe, which shows me the temperature, and many other parameters, hardware parameters, and I'm afraid that I'm going to lose all this if I upgrade to Windows 10. Maybe not, but as I said, I had a lot of problems with this computer because of the memory sticks, probably, which are Kingston 1.65 volt instead of 1.5 I would prefer, I should prefer 1.5 but whatever so right now I get this computer running somehow I don't wanna lose uh, this computer maybe I will risk and upgrade to Windows 10 one day so after this set actually to myself <coughs> I will start with the tutorial so, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an ASP.NET MVC application I'm going to deploy to Acer. And how I'm going to start is this way. First, I'm going to show you what do I have on Acer. I logged in with one of my accounts. It's a free account right now, 30 days. So that's why I'm using it and I'm gonna show you the resource groups initially I didn't have any resource groups it was empty I didn't have this show me all resource groups all resources actually this SQL server which I have created another SQL server I have created uh, no, this is a database, and this is another database, excuse me. And this is a web app, this is another web app. All this didn't exist in the beginning. Recent, let me go through all these uh, elements and look at them, because I want to show the differences. App services after creating our application app services to display, no app services to display, okay that's fine here we go I have two right now 
you will see that there will be one more or I will probably add two more okay virtual machines I don't have virtual machines running classic virtual machines okay databases and since I I want to cover creating ISP.NET MVC application and deploying to Azure I'm gonna follow one of the MSDN tutorials which I find very very useful because suits my purposes perfectly and I don't want to reinvent the, the wheel also we will be able to to go there and follow the tutorial with your own speed with your own purposes Azure SQL databases cloud services so hopefully you can go back and look at what I had here what I have here and compared to what is gonna show up after we do the changes after we create the application after we create the um, app service and add it here okay so with that said let's start our Visual Studio actually I have started already because I didn't wanna uh, waste my time and your time as well okay so this is the tutorial which I'm gonna follow partially uh, who knows maybe not partially we'll see what what's gonna happen now but I'm gonna use this tutorial thank you very much Rick Anderson uh, it's a recent tutorial from December 7 2015 now it's 5th of uh, January 2016 so it's almost one month since it has been published which is a relatively new tutorial and this is my main mind map those are the topics I wanna cover maybe not only in this tutorial as I said so I showed to you already how my Acer looks I wanna attract your attention to something else as well my Visual Studio account and my Visual Studio Development Essentials I subscribe to uh, Visual Studio Development Essentials as well um, to use the goodies featured articles and videos, tools education, support, you can find a lot of stuff here and I also subscribe to this service for six months plural site, six month subscription a lot of videos, a lot of materials to learn the Microsoft products and not only Microsoft products of uh, I don't want to speculate but whatever a lot of stuff to learn okay here we go this is my Visual Studio and I'm gonna start a new project new project and I'm gonna show you the magic of Visual Studio I'm gonna create uh, resource group which we saw here I'm gonna create resource group transparently when I'm creating my application we'll see the differences resource group I'm gonna create application service as well we'll see how we can create all these things through Visual Studio okay I'm gonna say ISP.NET web application I logged in as zero tool with this account see trial uh, I want to show you something else as well before that account settings if you go to account settings here you can manage your account settings you can manage your Visual Studio profile when you install your Visual Studio on another computer a lot of information will be preserved for you so you don't have to lo again log in and enter it again for example I have three accounts and I'm using one of them three Acer accounts I'm using one of them right now and as you can see from these properties I can manage that uh, I showed it already when you click on manage Visual Studio you come here in your browser and you can manage your Visual Studio account and also you can access your Visual Studio development essentials okay those are in these tabs 
Okay. Close that. New project. ISP.NET web application. And let's try to stick with this tutorial. As I said, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I'll see the name of the application uh, we are going to create. A lot of things I wanted to cover I found in this tutorial, so that's why I'm using it. Contact Manager. Okay, this tutorial will going to create Contact Manager. Contact Manager. Okay, my goal in this tutorial is just to show you how to create an um, application in um, Azure or how to connect your application to your Azure account and all this kind of stuff. Create directory for solution. I'm using this account even though I have three different accounts right now on this computer framework 4.5 as you can see 4.5.2 those are the things which I wanted to show. Okay. Now we're starting to create this uh, this application. It's gonna be MVC application, and if you wanna use the Visual Studio to create um, your application in uh, Azure, of course we have to check this host in the cloud box then Visual Studio will create a lot of things for us okay so change authentication we are going to use individual user account this is the most familiar way to do it with uh, registration and username and password just to check who is uh, identified and to decide about the authorization individual user account I'm gonna say OK and I'm gonna click here host in the cloud maybe I'm gonna re uh, remove the applications which will be created in Azure and uh, later show you how separately to create one project the same MVC project the same type of project and after that create separately the application and connect them because uh, in the beginning you never know maybe you're gonna host it in the Azure maybe you're gonna use uh, a different host who knows so host in the cloud I'm gonna check this because uh, this is used in the tutorial application individual user account host in the cloud click OK and uh, let's see now we'll click OK Visual Studio probably will help us to create all these things contact manager 2016 see app service plan it's free trial um, I have a bad feeling about that but we'll see <laughs> app service plan free trial clicking the create button will create the following as a resource okay web application name free trial resource group app service plan application service plan okay hosting if you want to specify a name for your application it says all this kind of stuff app service plan Okay, so let's create one new location South Central US. Since I'm in the in Europe, in Bulgaria, I'm gonna use uh, Western Europe because uh, I believe there is no Eastern Europe. So West Europe, North Europe, maybe North Europe, West Europe. Okay, let's use uh, West Europe data center located in the West Europe uh, size free B1 contact manager this is my plan I'll click OK and 
after all this is done I'm gonna click create after that we'll see what's gonna happen in Acer this is what I wanna show this is the most important thing for me and I wanna show you where you can get your credentials for accessing Acer later if you create uh, your application manually not through this process let's see if the application is going to be created okay after waiting a certain amount of time let me make sure I'm still recording after waiting a certain amount of time the application was created adding application inside to project, adding package Microsoft application inside web123 to project contact manager you see how all these things are happening right now and uh, let's look at in Acer, let's see what happened in Acer this is as I said the thing I wanted to show okay so what is gonna be the URL of my application? How I can access? How can I publish? We'll publish immediately right now, just to make sure that everything works. Adding application inside the project. Okay, that is done. Now, very interesting for me is how the things are looking right now in Acer. So let's see the resource groups default application central US PhD unit I had this resources already all resources here we go contact manager 2016 January 5th 1135 because this is the time when I have created it contact manager plum contact manager okay so I didn't create a database which was the most stupid thing I did but this is what I did probably I'm gonna create the database later I should have click create database I don't want to start over. Now let's try to publish this. Let's try to publish and see what happens now. Publish. I will have a chance actually to create the, the server and everything else later. Okay, so this is the profile. Contact Manager 2016. I have several profiles here. At least uh, not for this application. I have other uh, other profiles for other applications but for this one I have only this profile connection server contact manager I'm gonna remove everything when uh, when I'm done with this tutorial anyway so I don't care about the passwords and all this kind of stuff dollar contact manager 2000 this is the username the password save password and here we go this is the URL of my newly created application. Let me validate the connection. Even if you don't create your application while you're creating um, application in Acer while you're creating your local application, don't worry about that. You always can go and create all these things later. Acer, file publish, database, default connection, default connection, data source, it offers me connection to one of my previously created servers, data source, databases, I should have created a database, I may start over, sorry about that, determining changes not 
that many changes, but I can publish immediately right now my application without any databases. I can create database manually, as I said. I just wanted to show in this um, beginning of the tutorial how to create a database and the application at the same time. I uh, may remove everything and start again, or I can add uh, the database server now settings and change the the connection string yeah of course a lot of things needs to be pushed to the to the server okay let me see here data source this is one of my uh, databases which I have created let's create a separate database for this project let's not keep this one And I'm going to do this manually, coming here, going to SQL databases, source, no SQL database to display. Come on, there should be databases. Azure and PhD only. Subscribe, SQL databases. Let's create one. Let's look at in the tutorial what should be the name of my database. Web settings. Actually, it didn't ask me to configure Microsoft Azure Web, uh, Web App for some reason. I'm going to watch the tutorial or the video again. Um, or maybe I didn't see it contact manager in any case I'm gonna call it contact manager somehow let me go back here to Azure and I'm gonna say okay let's create a database now in West Europe free trial enter database name contact manager contact manager okay it allows me to do it uh, server configure settings let's see what do we have here use an existing server loading select PhD uni Western Europe create new server this is what I want to do enter the name of the server database I will name it contact manager and because it's taken already I'm gonna say 64 or something as you can see I'm gonna create a new server database windows.net server admin login for this uh, server I'm going to say admin, admin server login. Um, I can name it, for example, contact admin or something. Right now, probably it's complaining because I don't have a password. So I'm going to create a password. again password my password something simple admin error make sure your login name meets the following requirements it's a SQL identifier and not a typical system name like admin administrator blah 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 or a built-in database user or role like them um, make sure your name doesn't contain white spaces unicode characters or non-alphabetical characters and that doesn't begin with number or symbol okay uh, so it's a contact manager let me call it this way contact manager admin or let's keep it simpler just contact manager this is how I'm gonna name it West USA no I don't want West USA I want again in Western Europe
Western Europe. Okay. So I'm creating a new database at the same time I'm creating a new server. Contact Manager 64, database windows.net. Uh, new server should be created server contact manager 64 blank database select source is gonna be a blank database pricing task standard s3 come on premium premium standard test 3 wow look at the charges serious amounts mamma mia basic B optional configuration I hope they're not gonna charge me they didn't charge me for my first database subscription free trial so collation SQL Latin one general I'm not gonna use a Cyrillic or Chinese or something like that resource group let's see how many resource groups do we have right now I have only one I give I believe PhD uni default application um, inside central group name I'm gonna create a contact manager group 64 okay yeah and I'm gonna create this database server and the database as well creating SQL database here we go I have already one PhD uni now I'm gonna create this one so a lot of troubles because I just forgot to create uh, the SQL server and the database while I was doing application creation we'll see what's gonna happen now Azure Come on, creating SQL. Okay, let's let's get back here. Default connection, data source, to end PC, integrate security three. Okay. This is my local SQL server. And uh, I believe uh, I should connect to the database to the Azure database default connection later so I'm gonna change this uh, connection string we'll see that let Azure create the database and after that I will publish my application I will connect after that to to the server okay do you want to save changes made to the profile actually I didn't make any changes so right now let's start our application and see how it looks if I press Control F5 my application will be launched right now and then we'll see how it looks okay Come on, it takes forever. Yeah, I have my application finally running on my local machine. So everything works fine. Home. We are on the home already. I want to show you the different uh, parts. And also I'm not starting with uh, MTASP.NET MVC application. I'm starting with with uh, application which has authentication already. I don't want to uh, struggle and create all these things I just want to take the shortcut cut the corners and just find the fastest way to to get something done contact 
voila I can register I can log in and I'm gonna show you the local database all this information is saved in the local database and also entity framework is used already in my application for identification purposes registration is uh, is done through the local database actually my registration will be recorded there we'll connect right now to this database uh, just to make sure that we see everything okay we're gonna use server explorer of course uh, my computer is very slow here but uh, hopefully we'll see everything okay 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 contact login okay let's try something um, let's say admin or example.com um, password 7 up login of course I don't expect to be able to log in right now I didn't register just to show you the error message but um, the database actually works the connection to the database uh, works because otherwise uh, I will get uh, exceptions exception messages or errors come on invalid login attempt so actually the code has connected to the database and the program understood that I am I have uh, I don't have registration and I haven't I haven't been allowed to enter password 7 up again password 7up register and after the registration I will be able to log in right now hello oh don't save this password notice here 1594 I wanna cover a lot of ground I'm not sure that I will be able I wanna show you as many as possible concepts we'll see what's gonna happen now where can I see all these things for example when you choose uh, properties for our application we'll see a lot of things .NET 4.5 build web and all, all, uh, all kind of stuff before I forget on my other computer on the laptop actually I have a lot of troubles not being able to publish so if you have such troubles before publishing you have to clean the project and after that publish what happens is um, when you try to publish the Visual Studio hangs and after that restarts one way to solve this problem is first to clean and after that try to publish another way to do it is go to properties package publish SQL or package publish web let me go there enable this page and say import for web config I personally did that I always clean before I publish okay so those are the properties of the application as you can see here you can uh, see the URL 1594 uh, this is the port that is using our application SSL enable it and all this kind of stuff okay those are the properties of the application and this is the readme file which you get here somewhere contact application okay so let's see show all files show all files project readme this is the file which you see when the application gets open your isp.net application project readme, readme html okay so where the data gets stored here we get here it is in application data folder 
in a local database called ISP.NET Contact Manager 2016, whatever. Where can you see the connection string? Here, in the web config. Connection string. Right now, our application connects to exactly this file. Data directory ISP.NET Contact Manager MDF. But this local database can be used only for development purposes on this computer. When we deploy our application to Azure, we have to use the SQL Server. Let's see if our SQL Server is ready already. Has been created. Yes, it has been created. Show database connection strings. Notice something. When I attempt to publish my application, when I say publish for example so failure is a great way to learn I did a mistake or I don't remember what I did actually I will watch the tutorial later I forgot to create the SQL Server it's not such a big deal now we have created the SQL Server and by purpose I created a separate database server and I, I have created a database inside of it called uh, Contact Manager uh, 64. Now, this is the database which I'm going to use. Notice this. Use this connection string at runtime update destination web config. Right now, in my local web config, I connect to the local database by the name of ISP.NET Contact Manager. This database I cannot use on Azure. I have to create database server and connect to this database server. Right now this connection string also is for my local SQL server which doesn't exist to Nazer so I have to replace it. This is because of the failure which I did actually if somehow during the creation of the application you're able to create the server and the database um, the database string already will be here for you otherwise you have to enter it manually so I'm gonna do this when I have created the contact manager database together with the server I get the server name which allows me to connect to this uh, to this server and I'm gonna do this just in a second show database connection strings auto.net server this is the connection string which I have to use actually I have a copy very convenient way I'm gonna show how the connection string looks I'm working with 70 uh, 720p resolution just uh, because this is the best resolution for YouTube and that's why my real estate on the desktop is not very much see what it says server tcp contact manager 64 database windows .net, database contact user and my password here I have to put my password here I'm gonna put my password here for the database server encrypt through uh, trust service certificate false connect timeout 30 and after that I will put this connection string here because uh, this is what my remote instance of the application should use to connect to the server. Your password here, my password is something like that. It's not such a big deal. If I remember correctly, I hope so. And I'm gonna use this this connection string. connection, save password, settings, application DB context. Why is not allowing me right now to execute code first migration? Because I didn't allow migration still on my application. Okay, I will allow the migrations just in a second. Let's first try to publish our application and see how it looks on Azer and after that we will continue with the database and all this kind of stuff publish the application so let's wait and see what happens 
Okay, I have been redirected to my application on Azure, to the URL, and let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that everything works fine and I will see my application running here. Of course, the login and the registration is not going to work because there is no database with which my application to communicate, but home, as you can see, works properly, uh, properly about contact also works. Register is not going to work. I expect here to get errors. If I try to register, for example, I can say um, admin something, some kind of a password, again, password, and if I try to register, I'm going to get error messages simply because there is no database which our application to communicate to. Wow! Hello admin! That surprised me a lot. Get more libraries. Actually the database has been used already. That's absolutely amazing thing. The Microsoft magic happened. I don't know how, but it works. Contact manager. Okay. So, obviously, publish. When I put it the correct, the correct string, use this connection string at runtime, update destination web config. Obviously the database also was created, execute code first migrations. Since I don't have migrations, there are no mi migrations, but miraculously everything works. As I said, I, um, I haven't done this error before to create the database separately, so we'll see what happens. Let's connect first to the local database here. Contact manager and see how the database, the tables look. I have created as uh, far as I remember one user which is called admin example.com. The tables, let's see the tables, isp.net users. Right mouse click. show table data too much magic, too much magic in Microsoft too much magic okay open the file here we go okay all this information is saved into this file in the local database Okay, let's connect to Azure in the Server Explorer. Let's see the application services. Right now I have Uni, PhD Uni, one default application, and I should uh, I should have um, I should have the newly created, which is a contact manager, which I don't see for some reason. Default application. Ah, here we go in the resource group. Default application, I have a contact manager. This is another resource group. Contact manager, here we go. Here are the files. I can now look at the web config file. So, in other words, it's enough actually to enter the correct connection string in the, in the publish window in order to get everything done. Here we, here we go. Here it is, the connection string. Contact manager together with my password and all this kind of stuff. So, perfect. That's even better than I, would, I, I was thinking. Okay, so SQL databases in the Server Explorer. Maybe it's going to ask me uh, to add exception in the firewall rules when I try to connect to contact manager Azure contact manager 
right mouse button, open SQL Server Object Explorer. I already added such a rule in my firewall because I have done other applications. Here we go. Add firewall rule. This firewall rule actually is added to the remote station. Contact Manager 64, Microsoft SQL Server 2014. I have installed on this machine. Password 7 up, and I'm on the 7 heaven. Databases, notice now I'm opening the remote database which is running on Azure somewhere in the cloud with my uh, server explorer, server object explorer, contact manager. The database has been created, the tables has been created, just wonderful. System tables. Okay, let me make sure I see the tables. Here we go. View data. This is the remote server somewhere in Azure. How wonderful that is. Okay, admin example. Okay, that's perfect, perfect, perfect. So my application is up and running very quickly for less than half an hour. I have fully blown ASP.NET MVC application with authentication authorization which allows the users to register to log in about home contact a great 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 starting point with a database okay I showed to you how to find the connection strings contact manager 64 database windows net this is the server Of course, we can connect to this uh, database server using my uh, management studio. For example, Microsoft SQL Server 2014 Management Studio. If I open it, now I can connect to this database. I can do whatever I like. So, in fact, I killed two birds with one stone. I partially showed to you how the application was created uh, in the Azure while I was creating my local application and at the same time I showed to you how I created using the portal, the Azure portal, I created a database. And I wanted to do this uh, these things in two steps. First I wanted to show automatic creation of the database and the database server and the application in Azure using Visual Studio. And in the second step, I wanted to show how I'm going to create one MVC application without knowing where I'm going to host this application. After that, decide, OK, I'm going to host it on uh, Azure, create application on Azure, create database server, and after that, link my application to this, because this is what I was doing. Now, server name. What is the server name here? It's Contact Manager 64 database. It's SQL Server Authentication Login. It was Contact Manager 64 user, and the password was password 7up. Connect. Wow, cannot connect to the database windows, additional information, login failed, user contact manager 64 max. Yeah, I probably uh, made a spell mistake somewhere. Contact manager when I was creating the database. Contact manager. 
resource group, the user, and all this kind of stuff. Maybe this is the error. Failure, as I said, is a great contact manager, is a great way to learn things. Hmm. Free trial. Login contact manager. SQ Server Authentication, of course, Database Engine, Contact Manager 64, Password 7up, Connect, again, Pff. Contact Manager, thank you, God, I got at least the connection string properly done here, let me Contact Manager, Database Window, Database User, ID, Contact Manager, ah, mm hmm, here we go. ID, Contact Manager A64, Contact Manager 64, User ID, Contact Manager, Contact Manager, is this actually the name? Let me try. I don't believe that, but still, I'm gonna try. Password 7up. Yeah, this is the username. Believe or not. Okay, databases. Contact manager table. I took it from the connection string. So, nothing bad happened. If you don't remember uh, your username, you can extract this from the connection string. Okay, another thing which I want to show you is application services. How can you get the connection information for your application. Let's say if you move your application to another computer, to another Visual Studio, and you want to deploy from this computer, you have to be able to connect to Azure. So, where is uh, your credential information? I'm talking about this connection. It's a good point, actually, to, to show you that. Where can you find your site name, your username, and all this kind of stuff? Okay, so at least you have to remember your application. I remember mine, which is Contact Manager. Click here, and it took me actually a little bit time to find this. More comments. Notice this. Get published information. You just click here, and a download will start soon. So when you open in the folder and open this file you'll find all the contact information which you, you probably will use, not probably, but you have to use to connect. So we are covering a lot of uh, a lot of stuff about how to connect. Come on, where did it go? Okay, so edit with notepad++. Plus plus. For example, uh, look at that now. Profile name, contact manager, web deploy, publish method, MS deploy, publish, URL. Okay. View, wrap, 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 word wrap. View, word wrap. Okay. I don't know. Is this uh, more understandable? We'll see right now. Publish profile, profile name. You you see here the profile name. You can find the user password. Here it is, the user contact manager. This is the user. Site name and all these things you can find here. I show it to you where to find and how to download it from Acer. So, 
contact manager, this is the SCM server, here it is. This is what you have to copy. Let's say for some reason you lost your information in, uh, in Visual Studio. Um, username, here it is. Oops, site name, this is site name. This is site name, sorry about that. This is site name, and this is our username with the dollar sign up front. And here it is, the password. You just have to copy and paste it here after that. And here it is, the destination application URL, the URL of your application. So this is how you find your credentials to connect to your Azure application. Okay, I showed to you how to find a password from the connection string here. Once you create the server, the SQL server, you have to go there. For example, databases. And you can find the connection string. Of course, you have to remember the password, at least for uh, your uh, database. And here it is, show database connection strings. Of course, you can change the password here in Azure. And see, you have connection strings for auto.net, ODBC, PHP, Java. That's just wonderful. Used for Node.js, open database connectivity, PHP, Java date database, active database object.net. Wonderful. This is what I wanted to cover in this uh, tutorial. And as I said, I wanted to do it in two steps, but I killed one, two boards with one stone. I showed to you partially how to create um, the application directly from Visual Studio and how to manually create database and how you can connect. Uh, let's say you didn't know it up front you're gonna deploy your application to Azure. What you can do is you go to resource groups if you like to create a new resource group and you create a new resource group. Click Add here and you create a new resource group. After that you go to application services and you create a new application service and you add it to the newly created resource group if you want to have a separate resource group. And when you go to publish, let's say you have created this application, you, ha you didn't have a glue that you're gonna deploy to Azure, but you have created the database, which I demonstrate how to create, and you have created resource group and application service. Resource group, of course, is optional. You can add your application service to existing resource group, but you have created the application service from here. Once you have this application group, you can download the connections. You go to the profile, you say Microsoft Azure App Service, and you will see your application services. You choose the right one, you say OK, and after that, you enter all this connection information preview. I show it to you how I uh, copy and paste it here the connection string for the remote server on Azure somewhere in the cloud. Start preview. So I think we covered a lot of ground. I showed to you also how to connect to the SQL server on Azure, how to look at your files on Azure through the server explorer through the Server Explorer, you can uh, look at your files, the remote files. For example, I showed to you webconfig remote. If you noticed, the webconfig connection string, the connection string in webconfig file actually gets replaced with whatever you put here. Use this connection string at runtime. Okay. Web config. This is the remote web config connection string. 
this is the local connection string somewhere I have it web config you can look at here the connection string looks totally different I'll put them side by side so we can compare and this magic happens automatically the connection string gets replaced on the remote server when the application gets deployed which is just wonderful on the left hand side I see the remote files the files of my application there and here I see also the databases and in the server object explorer I can see the content of the databases created in my remote server I wanted to show something else let's say you want for some reason to set this file to the server on Azer. There is no reason to do that, but let's say you have such file. Let's look at uh, what has been deployed to the remote server. The folders like app development, app data, app start hasn't been, as you can see, deployed. So application like bin is there, content is there because this is the HTML um, those are the HTML assets fonts if you look at down also has been deployed scripts also has been deployed server references application insight this doesn't exist in my application but uh, it's something created during the process of deployment views as well has been deployed but as you can see the controllers the models everything stays here in my application these folders models controllers they haven't been deployed okay so what if I want, for example, to deploy this? I can do it two different ways. I can say publish contact manager MDF file. And it's going to be deployed. Another way is just to include in project. If, if I say include in project, the next time when I deploy, this file is going to be deployed including the, uh, the application data folder they are going to be pushed to the server I don't have a reason to do that so I'm not going to do it but this is the way to do it I had a, a access file which I had to deploy to my server which had been put in application data so what I did is I just included into the application so the next time I upload it, it has been there. It has been on the remote server. Let me see what else do we have to cover. It's already one hour since we started this tutorial. So I think this is a great, great point probably to stop and continue later. Of course you can follow this tutorial with your own speed and do whatever you like set the page header and footer here how to set the page the, the footer and the header but the most important thing for me as I said in this tutorial was to show you what's going on in Azure how the application gets created how the database actually has been created the data server and the database uh, has been created in the next tutorial I'm gonna cover other other topics I think uh, we have enough things here notifications SQL database can be created in resource group contact manager 64 so the resource group actually has been automatically created for us the database we have created manually and we saw how to get the connection string and connect our application to it and for uh, my uh, 
big surprise actually uh, even without these migrations without doing migrations enabling migrations and whatever the database has been deployed to the server to the SQL server which is a nice surprise actually I like it very much I haven't tried that before and this obviously works so it works out of the box so for one hour we have fully blown application as I said with authentication and authorization and I'm very happy with that so this is my local copy this is my remote copy that's great and I uh, I did the summary so in this tutorial I, I have created a new application during the creation of the application I have created a resource group if I'm not mistaken and the application on the Azer after that I have created manually the SQL server and the database and I published my application using the database server let me look at again the publish option I'll look at again the mind map just to make sure that I didn't miss anything and uh, we'll wrap okay let me look at here when you create application as I said I wanted to do it in two steps but I did it anyway slightly differently create web application group create web application db server create database so those are the two steps first I wanted to show you how transparently for you the database server and the database will be created together with the application and all the connection uh, parameters will be uh, done for you automatically and you just have to publish the second thing I wanted to show you is just create application without saying that I'm gonna deploy to the uh, Azure create the group create the web application DB server create database but as I said I think it's clear enough right now deploy include exclude in the project I showed to you how to exclude and include include the project and even if the file is not included in the project you still can publish publish individual files which are not published Porto Azer I showed to you Visual Studio account here it is you can manage a lot of thing in uh, things with your um, Visual Studio account and you can subscribe to Visual Studio Development Essentials to benefit from uh, from this program which Microsoft offers it's a great program so take advantage of it and Azer of course let me look at more things just to make sure I didn't miss anything and we started to follow this tutorial set the page header header and footer but I think now just to stop here we learn how to create application how to deploy to Azer and we look at the Azer in details we did a deep dive not very deep but deep dive in uh, Azer in the next tutorials we'll talk about uh, other concepts like how to customize your layout in fact that's very simple let me go ahead my of myself and just show you that in shared folder in the layout sharp HTML CS HTML you go here and you say for example contact manager come on I hope my Visual Studio is not gonna crash right now on me not responding yeah it's a good it's a good place to wrap up probably based on your project we have identified extensions you may helpful okay so I'm gonna say here contact manager with the same success we we could use for example a block or a forum we can create a forum contact manager the three places application name for example we'll say here contact manager again contact manager 
and the third place is here we can say contact manager okay I'm very happy because I'm not using right now repository I'm gonna show this in the next tutorial uh, one of the next tutorials but I'm very happy because very quickly I have created and deployed application ISP.NET MVC application I don't even have to build this uh, application name if I refresh I should be able to see here changes in the application name here also my ASP.NET should be called now contact manager manage change your account settings come on and every time you like you just deploy your application application name come on voila finally this page has been reloaded as you can see now contact manager contact manager change account settings if you go to home probably you will see other other things okay just to wrap up we created and deployed a simple default application to Windows Azure and also we saw how the application service was created resource group SQL database and SQL server thank you for uh, watching this and um, I hope you like it I hope it was helpful not only for me but for other people as well